So, today's topic is fiber formation. Now, for forming the sliver, what we need is a doffer. Doffer in association with the cylinder actually uh, helps in forming a sliver. So, first of all, let us know what a doffer is. A doffer is a cast iron cylinder, it has a diameter of around 27 inch, and the surface of the doffer is pulled with lot of pins or wire points. Typically, the speed of a doffer is around six, 10 to 60 rpm. Now, the fibers which are there on the cylinder, they are already separated because of the action between cylinder and flat. Now, once this separation is over, they, are, they need to be transferred and transformed into a sliver. So, we need to transfer the separated fibers from the cylinder surface to the doffer now and doffer is placed very, very close to the cylinder. The gap between cylinder and doffer is very low and much less than a millimeter. So, as soon as the fibers on the cylinder surface the fibers come close to the doffer, the fibers will be transferred to the doffer surface because they will come into contact with the doffer. Now, what are the mechanism of transfer of fibers from cylinder to doffer? Now, there are two possibilities of transferring fibers from cylinder to doffer. It could be in a carding mode of transfer or it could be in a stripping mode of transfer because we have seen that fiber transfer from liquid into cylinder is through stripping mode. Now, let us see here, so that should we follow a carding mode of transfer for fibers from cylinder to doffer or a stripping mode as it is practiced on for, for transferring fibers from liquid into cylinder. The deposited fibers on doffer should be thick enough to form a coherent web, which can be stripped off and handled easily for further processing. See, the fibers which will be deposited on the doffer must be sufficiently thick, so that there is some coherence and we can handle them without breaking. The difficulty in stripping action is in the case of stripping action, the lap which was fed is thinned down to the extent of almost 2000 times on the cylinder surface. And now, if this thin ribbon of fibers which is there on the surface of the cylinder has to be transferred to the doffer. It is too thin to be handled properly because there is hardly any coherence between the fibers. Since the, the thickness of the fiber on the cylinder surface is too low, almost 2000 times than what would be the thickness of a lap sheet. Now, if we immediately transfer it to the stripping mode, then this thin sheet will not have much coherence, not much strength. Besides, high doffer speed would have resulted in throwing off the fibers due to very high centrifugal force, because in that case, the doffer speed should have been more than the speed of the cylinder to make the transport of fibers from cylinder to doffer through stripping mode. And therefore, doffer speed would have been little more than the cylinder speed. And hence, high centrifugal force would have acted on the doffer, on the fibers which are on the doffer and they would have thrown off by high centrifugal force. 
The third problem would be that it would be very extremely difficult to transform the wave into a coherent sliver at a very high speed because there are a lot of resistance of the air as the wave has to pass through the medium of air at the time of transforming them into a sliver. So, these are the difficulties that we would face if we go for stripping mode of transfer from cylinder to duffer and hence we have to think of some other mode of transfer. The other mode is carding mode of transfer and let us first understand the disadvantages that we have when we try to transfer the fibers from one surface to the another surface through carding mode. Like fibers are also getting transferred from cylinder surface to the flats and the mechanism of transfer is basically a carding mode of transfer. So, through carding action is not only that we are separating out fibers, we can also transfer fibers from one surface to the other. Now, in the case of transfer from cylinder to duffer in carding mode, there will be sudden deceleration as the speed will reduce from around 26 meter per second to which is typically nowadays for a doffer is almost 1.3 meters per second. And such a huge reduction in speed will result in disorientation of the fibers on the doffer surface and the fibers will be completely no, uh, disoriented from each other and there will be lot of deformed fibers that we will find on the surface of the doffer. So, this is what is expected when we see that we go for carding mode of fiber transfer from cylinder to doffer. Because of deceleration, the orientation that we had achieved on the cylinder surface of the fibers that orientation will be completely destroyed as soon as they land on the doffer surface because of change of speed. So, this is what we have to accept if we go for carding mode of transfer. The other problem is the transfer being not 100 percent efficient, a lot of fibers are retained by the cylinder and carded again along with newly fed fresh fibers for the liquid inside. This results in building up a thick residual fiber layer on the cylinder. This residual layer in steady state may become too thick to deteriorate the quality of carding. So, in the carding mode, this is another problem that many fibers may not be transferred to the doffer. Some of them will go back to the along with the cylinder and as a result many fibers will circulate on the cylinder surface many times and therefore, a thick layer of fibers will be formed on the cylinder surface which is we call fiber load on cylinder and this residual fiber layer may cause a quality deterioration of the fibers if it is too thick. It can lead to formation of naps also. So, these are the two different problems that we will face with carding, but even then this is the only way we transfer the fibers from cylinder to doffer. The advantage that we get in this mode of transfer is that the fractional transfer of fibers from cylinder to doffer provides an opportunity of mixing of fibers belonging to different return fiber layers on cylinder. So, cylinder also acts as a mixture. Whatever fibers are not transferred to doffer, they will go back and they will join the fibers which are fed from the liquor inside and therefore, these fibers will get an opportunity to be mixed up with the fibers being fed from the liquor inside and hence a lot of mixing that occurs on the surface of the cylinder. 
that is the advantage we get by having this mode of transfer. And the other advantage is the fiber receives repeated carding action between the cylinder and flat. Since they go back, everything is not getting transferred, hence they get an opportunity to be carded again between cylinder and flat. So, if there are any fiber clusters which are left, there is a possibility that this clusters will be opened out when the cluster goes to the cylinder flat region. So, repeated recycling of the fibers has this great advantage of repeated carding actions on the fibers and therefore, better opening and better individualization of the fibers. That is the advantage we get and we have actually gone for carding mode of transfer of fibers from cylinder to doffer. So, the action there is carding. Here is a diagram which is a velocity profile and of the different organs of the carding machines and the linear density profile of the material on the different organs of the card. What we see here is that at the feed point, the velocity of the feed material that is the lap is only 0 0.013 meters per second and the typical lap linear density could be 490 kilotics. As soon as the lap is acted by the Lagardian teeth, the Lagardian surface rotates or moves at the speed of 13 meters per second. So, there is a draft of almost 1000 between the feed roller and the Lagardian and we can say that means, the lap sheet is thinned down 1000 times by the time they reach the Lagardian surface. From there, as soon as the fibers are picked up by the cylinder, the cylinder surface speed typically is 26 meters per second. So, there is a draft of around 2 between liquid in a cylinder. So, therefore, by the time they reach the cylinder surface, the sheet is further thinned down 2 times. Hence, the lap is thinned down 2000 times as was told earlier by the time is reaching the surface of the cylinder. So, it produce a very thin sheet of fibers on the cylinder and now on this thin sheet the carding is going to carding action is going to take place. Since the sheet is very very thin the gap between the flat and the cylinder surface also has to be very very narrow and because of this very narrow gap between the two surfaces there is intense opening action on the fibers when the fibers are traveling the carding zone that is the zone which contains the working flats. And after passing over the carding zone as soon as they approach the doffer there is a sudden drop in speed. Typical speed of a doffer would be around 1.3 meters per second. So, there is a huge change in speed from 26 meters per second to 1.3 meters per second. Because of this difference, the draft could be to the order of 0.19, much less than 1. So, draft being less than 1 would basically mean there is a condensation of fibers, there is no real stretching of the fibers. So, therefore, as the fiber lands on the doffer surface, they get packed and a large fibers from a larger surface area of the cylinder will be transferred on a smaller surface area of the doffer and therefore, there will be accumulation of fibers on the doffer surface. Hence, the wave of fibers which will be deposited on the doffer which will be little thicker than the wave thickness that we get on the surface of the cylinder. This is how the 
velocity of the fibers as well as the linear density of the fibers are changing as they move from feed to the delivery point of the machine. We will now discuss the fiber transfer mechanism that is how the fibers are getting transferred to duffer. As we have already stated that the basic mechanism of transfer is carding action. So, the action between cylinder and duffer is basically a carding action. The action between cylinder and flat is also a carding action, but the action between cylinder and liquorin or tecarin is basically a stripping action. Now, here what we see is the diagram A on the x axis we have distance from the cylinder surface and on the y axis we have fraction of fiber protruding from the cylinder surface. So, if the fibers are gripped at the front end on the by the cylinder oil points and the cylinder rotates at a very high speed most of the trailing end of the fibers will be projecting out and uh, this length of the protruding part of the fibers from the cylinder surface will vary depending upon the length of the fiber and the way it will vary is shown in diagram A. That is there are many fibers which will be protruding to a lesser extent their numbers are more and as we go long fiber ends protruding from cylinder surface will be much less in number. From here as we move to figure B shows the length of the doffing arc. Now, doffing arc is the arc of the doffer which participates in transfer of fibers from cylinder to doffer. The entire doffer surface is not participating. Part of the doffer surface which is facing the cylinder is only participating in accepting the fibers which are being thrown towards it by the cylinder. Now, the, the distance E indicates the gap that exists between the doffer and the cylinder. So, if E is the gap the from there the doffing arc is increasing as it is shown in the diagram. So, the fibers which are long they will be having they will be actually when they are traversing the zone between cylinder and doffer they will sweep past the long arc fibers which are shorter in length or that projecting end in short they will sweep past a smaller length. So, this diagram shows the length of the doffing arc which will be swept past by the fibers which are projecting out from the surface of the cylinder. The third diagram is a doffer cylinder fiber contacts and on the x axis we have distance from cylinder surface. Now, the fiber projecting ends which are lesser than the length E, these fibers will not have any chance to be transferred because their projecting out ends is much less than the distance E and hence there is no possibility of such fibers to be transferred. The other fibers whose length is projecting out much more than E, only they have a possibility to get transferred. The fiber transfer from cylinder to doffer is basically a stochastic in nature. That basically means that we are not very sure that the fiber which is coming from cylinder side and lashing on the doffer not necessarily would get transferred at the very first instant. It may get transferred, may not get transferred. It can go back without getting transferred and comes back again and again it meets the doffer. So, a typical fiber may repeatedly come into contact with the doffer before it gets finally transferred to the doffer. So, therefore, there is no guarantee that a fiber when it is encountering the doffer for the first time will be transferred to the doffer and hence we call it 
The transport process of a fiber from center to dropper is stochastic in nature, it is highly random. The chances of transport would be proportional to the fraction of fiber protruding ends at a certain distance from the cylinder surface, which has been shown in the previous diagram, and the length of the doffing arc, that is, number of doffer arc points with which the fibers may come into contact. Therefore, the chances of fiber transfer occurring at different distance from the cylinder surface can be stated as the chances of transfer is equal to the fraction of fibers at a particular distance from the cylinder surface and the potential arc of contact of those fibers. So, therefore, if you go back to the diagram again, then we see that the, the diagram C is basically a multiplication of A and B very short fibers or fibers whose ends are projecting distance less than E are not getting transferred. So, doffer cylinder contact points for those fibers will be basically 0. Hence, there is no chance of that getting transferred. The very long fibers which are there, their numbers are less. Here, if you see the number, this number of those long fibers are very, very less the potential arc of contact is very high. Number being less, potential arc of contact being very high, if you multiply these two, the doffer cylinder fiber contact points for these fibers will be much less, mainly because the numbers are much low. And therefore, for these fiber, the potential contacts for transfer is going to be less. And in between, we will find a maximum mainly because fibers projecting out ends, number of those fibers are very large, and somewhere in the middle, therefore, we here we get the maximum value. When the fibers are coming towards the doffer, as soon as they land on the doffer surface, the fibers are pushed towards the doffer surface and the doffers keeps on accepting the fiber as long as a particular area of the doffer is crossing the doffing arc. So, a particular area of the doffer may take certain time to cross the doffing arc. During this journey to the doffing arc, this zone of the doffer surface will keep on receiving fibers. And the fibers are pushed by the cylinder rod points towards the doffer surface. If we increase the speed of the doffer, then what we can expect? Even though the speed of the doffer is increased, the cylinder speed is much larger in comparison to doffer speed. See, the cylinder speed could be almost 20 times more than the surface speed of the doffer. Therefore, even though the doffer speed is increased, little bit by 10 percent or 15 percent or 20 percent, there is hardly any change in the transport of fibers. The transport of fibers still remains more or less similar. In fact, it may increase on the contrary, because more surface area of the doffer will be made available to the cylinder for fiber transfer. One can always argue that the time to cross the doffing arc will be less if we increase the doffer speed. And therefore, one can expect that the fiber transfer will be less. However, at the same time, fresh doffer surface will be presented more and more for fiber transfer if we increase the doffer speed. And therefore, the net result that we see is that by steadily increasing doffer speed by 10, 15, 20 percent, actually the transport of fibers from cylinder to doffer increases. That is, the transport efficiency will, will increase if we increase the doffer speed. And the reason is that clean, fresh doffer wire points are presented to the cylinder for transport of fibers from cylinder to doffer. That is what actually happens.
The important thing about this process of fiber transfer is the length and size of the topping arc. So, we will study the geometry of this region in order to find out how the dimension of the topping arc is related to the geometrical parameters of cylinder and topper. Now, the diagram what we see there is a cylinder and there is a topper only part of it a sector of cylinder and topper is are shown in this diagram and we see from the diagram itself that the cylinder area let us say this is r the topper radius is smaller the thickness of the fiber layer is a if i join the centers of cylinder and topper we get the line o o dash the setting between cylinder and topper is represented by small e from here we draw a line from o to c where this fiber layer is touching the doffer though in the diagram it is not so clear but if we draw it here this layer let us say is touching little thicker and is touching at the point c c is the point where the fiber layer on the cylinder surface comes into contact with the doffer so oc we connect similarly we connect o dash c now from this this is the the doffing arc is basically this arc from here to there or from here to there. This is the doffing arc as shown in the diagram. So, let us look at this. What is x? x is capital R plus small r plus small e minus r cos beta. And what is a c square? So, a c square equal to is equal to r plus a whole square. So, r plus a is from here to there minus r plus r plus e minus r cos beta. So, from here r cos beta is this is r cos beta. And a c is this is this a is missing in this diagram this is a is somewhere here. So, if we simplify this a c square is equal to r square minus r cos beta whole square. Combining equation 2 and 3, we get r plus r a whole square equal to this and from there we can find out what is cos beta and we cos beta if we write it here we get this equation what is cos beta. Therefore, arc a c is r beta and it will r cos inverse this. So, the length of the arc a c that is the doffing arc this length will increase with increase in cylinder radius because r is coming on the numerator with the doffer radius and with the thickness of the fiber layer I think it will be decrease in topper radius. The purpose of understanding this doffing arc is that the doffing arc is longer that basically means that the cylinder rod points will get more opportunity to comb the fibers on the surface of the toppers once they are transferred and they will be able to orient those fibers on the surface of the toffer. Because once the fibers are transferred to doffer, now the fibers are held by the doffer, but their ends are combed by the oil points of the cylinder and hence the orientation of fibers on the doffer surface depends how long the cylinder oil points are combing the fibers that have been transferred to the doffer surface. And for a given speed of cylinder and doffer, it all depends upon the length of this arc. If the arc length is more, 
more time the strain that gets to comb the ends of the fibers which have been transferred to the doffer surface. And therefore, longer doffer arc will basically mean that better orientation of the fibers on the surface of the doffer. That is the thing that we will get. Now, once the fibers are transferred to doffer, the next thing is the stripping of the doffer surface. That is how to remove or peel off the fibers from the surface of the doffer. Doffer is surface is full of lot of pins, the fibers are embedded there. Now, how do we remove the fibers from the doffer? That is the next job to be performed and here the diagram shows that here is this is the doffer, there is one typical wire point being shown here and let us say there is a single fiber also being shown in this diagram, which is being pulled by two rollers. Let us say Q is the force which counteracts stripping off weight from the doffer wire. Fibers are embedded and they are also to some extent entangled with the wire points. So, Q represents this force which counteracts the stripping of the weight from the doffer wire. So, Q depends upon basically orientation of fibers on the doffer surface, thickness of the fiber wave, the coefficient of friction between the fibers and the wire points of the doffer. These all determines the value of key, Q. Next, F is the force of friction between doffer wire points and the fiber. Alpha, as shown here, is the stripping angle, angle at which P is directed. P is the tension on the fiber as the fiber is being pulled. The fiber is the shown by this black line. Theta is the inclination of the doffer wire point as shown in the diagram. So, from this we can write Q plus F is equal to P cos alpha. P is here, component of P is P cos alpha. So, Q plus F is counteracting P cos alpha and therefore, F is going to be P cos alpha minus Q and the normal force N is going to be P sin alpha. Therefore, we can write F equal to mu into N and hence P cos alpha becomes minus Q becomes mu P sin alpha and hence Q can be written as P cos alpha minus mu P sin alpha. P we can take common and we can write P within bracket cos alpha minus mu sin alpha. Therefore, P becomes a function of Q divided by cos alpha minus mu sin alpha. The stripping force is the P. So, hence the stripping force depends upon the value of Q, the stripping angle alpha and the coefficient of friction mu. These three things will decide the value of the force that we need to peel out the wave from the surface of the doffer. Now, the strength of the wave must be less than the stripping force P. If it is not less than this, the wave is going to break. So, wave is, is made of large number of fibers, it is very thin, fibers are entangled between each other and there is some strength of the wave. But the stripping out force must be able to overcome the strength of the wave. Then the wave will be pulled out from the surface of the doffer. So, we have to ensure that the force P, stripping force is more than the strength of the wave and that is what that's the, it can come out easily. Doffer speed being in the range of 25 to 60 rpm, the oscillating doffing comb cannot be used for stripping action. From doffer, we have to strip it. So, how do we strip the fibers? Earlier, we used to have oscillating comb, but when the speeds of the machines have gone up, this oscillating comb is no more. No, no more it, it cannot work. 
now and we have replaced this comb by drop rollers. And drop rollers are therefore used for the purpose of continuous stripping of the dropper surface. Earlier, when the speed of the machine used to be very low, dropper speed also used to be very, very low, maybe 15 rpm, 10 rpm or so. Those days, we could use an oscillating comb to strip the fibers from the surface of the dropper. But today's cards are generally high production cards, the speeds are much more and for at such a high speed, the comb is not going to work, the comb will going to fail. So, all the machine manufacturers therefore, have given up the oscillating comb and they have gone for drop rollers. Now, here there are three methods of wave removal, which can be seen in the different no, in the machines made by different machine manufacturers. One is stripping by flexible straight or rigid covered wire rollers, pulling by combination of fluted drop rollers and a blade or lifting action by the wire covered rollers. There are the three different types which are which can be seen and in the uh, carding machines made by different manufacturers. The first one looks like this, this is the doffer. There is a flexible a roller with flexible wire points. So, this is wire points are basically peeling off the wave. Here is this is the wave and moving the wave in these directions and the wave is removed from the doffer by this flexible drop roller. From there it is guided forward and it is pulled out by a pair of rollers. These are basically heavily loaded uh, rollers, which can also crush some of these trash particles. We will discuss about them. So, they are helping in pulling the wave, which has been removed by this flexible straight drop roller, this roller. This is one type is another type where the flexible wire on this roll, drop roll has been replaced by this type of roller. This difference is here the teeth are flexible, here the sticks are rigid. We have rigid teeth, that is the only difference. The rest remains more or less similar, there is no much change. The third technique is with the help of a fluted roll, this is the fluted roller and this one is a blade. Here is our doffer. So, the fluted roller in combination with the blade will be able to pull the wave out the roller is pressed against the wave by spring pressure and in the combination of these two, the wave is removed from the surface of the doffer. And the third one is, and the last one is wire covered roller, where if you look at these wire points, this, these wires can penetrate the doffer wire points. So, these wires are on this surface, this is a drawer of roller. Drop rollers will be having wire points which can penetrate the doffer to some extent, and the wire points are also flexible in nature, so they do not damage the wire points of the doffer, and they will be able to remove the wave from the surface of the doffer. And once they are removed, they are guided forward and they are pulled out. These are the redirecting rollers and this is pulled out by these rollers and then it moves forward. So, these are the different ways of removing the wave from the doffer surface. So, once the wave is removed, the next job that is left is we have to consolidate the wave 
to form a sliver now. Wave comes out in the form of a thin sheet. So, the sheet needs to be transformed into a round sliver. So, wave which is thin and two dimensional sheet has to be converted into a round rope like assembly known as sliver. The sliver form is necessary since it poses the necessary coherence for the storage and subsequent handling. So, that is the form you want to give to the sheet. More important is its characteristics, which is close to the yarn in terms of arrangement of fibers within it. The method of transforming a wave into a sliver are with the help of a trumpet and calendar roller combination or with by the help of trumpet's belt. We will discuss these two now, the trumpet and calendar roller condensation process. Now, let us see that the doffer surface is here. We have placed a trumpet which is here and a calendar roller which is here and this is the distance the wave has to travel in the case of trumpet and calendar roller condensation process. The doffer surface to the trumpet this distance is roughly 30 to 50 centimeter. It is a long distance the wave has to travel. The candle rollers move slightly faster than the doffer, which so that there is a little tension on the wave and the wave does not sag or does not fall back. So, surface speed of candle roller will be little more than the surface speed of doffer. Generally, the speed difference will be to the order of 1.02, 1.01 or 1.05. That is what we keep. As the wave passes through the trumpet, sufficient lateral pressure is generated that transform the two dimensional sheet into a round shaped sliver. So, we are forcing the wave to converge at this point to a trumpet. A trumpet is nothing but basically a conical shaped piece through which the sheet is made to pass through. So, space is very, very narrow and is gradually becomes smaller and smaller and therefore, the entire sheet is transformed into a round shape product. At the same time, there is a lot of transverse pressure which is generated on the sheet and therefore, we will be able to consolidate the sheet as it is passing through the trumpet. The candid rollers are pulling the sheet forward and because they are heavily loaded, they are also applying pressure on the fibers. Hence, the consolidation is because of the narrow bore of the trumpet as well as the weight that we keep on the candle rollers. The bore size therefore, is very, very important and the pressure on the candle roller, these are the two parameters which we change depending upon the consolidation that we need in the sliver. Normally, the trumpet and the candle rollers are placed at the middle or at the center of the doffer and we call it symmetric condensation of the wave. The other possibility is asymmetric condensation of the wave. The everything is same. The only difference is that, that the trumpet and candle roller locations is not at the center of the doffer, but little away from it. Now, what is the reason for this? It causes any unevenness present in the wave to be distributed over a larger length of the sliver. That is the purpose. Here, this length of the wave is longer than this length of the wave. From here to here, this distance, and if we see this distance, they are different. So, if there is any thick region which is coming on the wave due to some unknown reason, Suppose I say there is a thick region here. As this moves towards the trumpet, it gets inclined. Because of this inclination, because this end will move faster than this end, and hence a band which appeared here parallel to the upper surface in the wave, that same band 
will be getting inclined more and more as it is approaching the trumpet. So, by the time it will pass through the trumpet, therefore, a thickness variation which was there in the wave will be distributed over a larger length of the sliver and hence the intensity of the thickness variation will be reduced. That is the very purpose of asymmetric condensation of the wave. As stated here, the candle roller moves slightly faster and the speed ratio between the candle roller and the top of surface is 1.01 to 1.05 all depends upon the type of fibers we are going to process. The other thing that we need to know is the differential draft on the fibers at the time of condensation. Here we see that this is the wave which is coming out from the doffer and moving forward. Let V is the velocity of ejection of the wave from the doffer. V is the mechanical draft between doffer and the candle roller. So, candle roller is here. Mechanical draft is the draft that we get through calculations from the gearing diagram of the machine. So, the component of ejection velocity along the edges A L or B L will be V cos theta. So, here they are all moving forward at the speed of V, but at the edges this velocity is going to be V cos theta. Similarly, here also it will be V cos theta. The velocity of the candle roller which is here, this is my candle roller. The velocity is d into v because d is the draft, mechanical draft. Therefore, the draft along the edges of the fiber is going to be d v by v cos theta and hence is v and v will cancel which will be d by cos theta. So, draft here at the edge is going to be d by cos theta for this fiber. So, as we go to a from b towards c, if we go from b towards c what will happen? Theta is going to be less and less. So, when you come to point c theta is going to be 0. So, the draft at any point along B to A or A to B is going to vary, is not going to be constant. The draft is minimum and equal to the mechanical draft D at the center. Here it is exactly same to the mechanical draft that we have set on the machine, but it will be maximum at the edges. So, these fibers at the edges will experience maximum drop, but the fibers at the center will experience the minimum drop. So, there is a difference in the drop that the fibers are going to experience as they are moving towards the trumpet and hence what one can see is rock selvage. Sometimes it can be seen in some machines that we get rock selvage of the wave may be noticed if the drop at the edges becomes too excessive and in some cases especially in the uh, older machines we could see this. In the modern machine this zone is completely covered by lot of rollers nothing is visible uh, we do not see what is happening there also. If we try to find out what is tan theta is B c by C l. So, theta is tan inverse B c by C l therefore, angle theta if we look at is as angle theta goes down C l will increase. No, 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 the other way around as C l increases, angle theta will be go down. So, if we want to reduce or play with the drop, you want to reduce the drop, we can either change theta. So, how do I change theta? So, theta is a function of two parameters B c and C l. Now, B c depends upon the length of the doffer. A B indicating the length of the doffer. So, length of the doffer 
is decided by some other factors. So, we cannot change the length b c or a b, but we can always play with the length c l or c l is basically the distance from the doffer to the calendar roller or to the trumpet point. So, angle theta will decrease as c l increases. So, if we move the calendar roller further from here to there, then angle theta is going to decrease. So, that is one way and therefore, one can say that that will reduce theta and therefore, that will reduce the possibilities of rugged selvage. But a long distance C L may cause the wave to break due to its own weight for traveling too long a distance. This wave is very, very thin. So, if it has to and it moves without any support, there is no support that is there to the wave. If it has to travel a long distance, the wave may sag and that will the wave may break also. On the contrary, if the distance is reduced too much, theta will increase. And if I move this point towards this, then theta is going to increase, causing the drop d star at the edges to cross the critical value, resulting in rugged self edges. So, the location of the calendar roller with reference to the doffer surface is very important machine parameter too close is bad, because rock selvage will be generated and therefore, the wave is going to be going to be uh, the sliver is going to be non-uniform. Similarly, if I move it too far, then the wave might break, it may sag, so we create another problem and hence one has to find out an optimum distance of the calendar rollers from the cylinder surface. We have to and machine manufacturers through trial and error have found out what is this optimum distance. Let us discuss traverse belt condensation. Now, in high production cars or in the modern cars, the delivery rate of the wave is very fast and therefore, it is difficult to consolidate the wave when it is moving through the air at very, very faster rate. The wave is likely to disintegrate due to air resistance, since it has to travel a long distance. Therefore, we have to find out some solution. Now, what could be the solution? The wave is to be condensed immediately and close to the detaching or stripping device. That is, we should not allow the thin and very, very flimsy wave to travel a long distance, especially in high speed cards or today's modern cards. And therefore, we need to condense as quickly as possible. And therefore, what we do? A traverse belt is placed close to the crush rollers or the stripping device. And as the belts, the traverse belt as shown in the diagram moves transversely, the wave moves laterally and get condensed while passing through the knee of the belts. Two counter rotating bands or a single circulating band carries the wave to the middle or in the case of single band, it will go to the side of the machine and it will get condensed. This is how the wave is stripped and then condensed in the modern card. But the difficulty of such device is that the wave cannot be visually seen for judging its quality. In the older version of the cards, since the wave was always visible to the engineer, therefore, one could easily see the quality of the wave whether the wave is cloudy, whether the a wave contains lot of trash particles or not, whether the cell wave is breaking. So, there was a possibility to inspect the wave to study the quality of the carding machines. But in the modern cars, since the wave is no more visible, 
such kind of inspection is not possible with this system. Now, we go to another important part of the machine which is known as crash roller. Crash rollers are basically two precision ground hardened steel rollers positioned one above the other. As you can see in the diagram, there are two crash rollers, one top, one at the bottom and these two steel rollers are pressed against each other. The pressure is to the tune of 15 Newton per centimeter, a typical pressure. Now, purpose of this crash roller is to crush out all foreign particles in the wave and also to break the bond between the particles and the fibers. So, whenever the wave will pass through this two precision ground rollers, the trash particles will get crushed. And what is the net effect of this? The particles will fall out either immediately or during subsequent operations, that is during drafting operations on breaker draw frame, on finisher draw frame. So, that possibilities will be there. Hence, the slivers may not necessarily look always clean, but the yarn will always look clean. But this device is suitable for low grade cottons, since low grade cotton contain more trash particles. In the case of very fine grade cotton, this may not work properly because the fibers may get damaged. So, for fine, long, clean fibers, you may not need crushing at all. On the contrary, the fiber might get damaged and we may not use the crushing rollers in processing or for processing uh, very fine grade fibers. The other important things to remember is that cotton with too much of seed coats should not be crushed in order to avoid roller lapping since oil may get extracted from the crushed seed particles. So, in case we know that a particular variety of cotton contains lot of seed coats, in that case it is better not to use the crushed rollers because as stated that the oil may get extracted and this oil will be acting as a medium to attract the fibers, the dust particles and may cause lapping on the drafting rollers, on the uprons, these problems could be there. So, with this we stop it today, thank you.